Hello everyone, this is Dr. Tushar Mehta. I'm an orthopedic surgeon and your faculty of orthopedics. Well, today this video is about uh, a recent article that was shared in the media, which you can see on your screens right now. Uh, in this article, they had written that, you know, there's a condition which is the most painful ever known to the mankind. So it kind of made me a little inquisitive that I should share information about this thing. Well, the condition, as you can see in this article, this is what is called as CRPS, Complex Regional Pain Syndrome. Let's try to understand complex regional pain syndrome. The first word is complex. So what does that mean? That this condition has got a very complex etiology. The second word is regional. What does that mean? So it involves a particular region. The third word is pain. So that means it is characterized by pain, which is severe burning and out of proportion. The third one is syndrome, which means that there is a cluster of other symptoms which is present in this condition as well. So I repeat everyone, CRPS, Complex Regional Pain Syndrome, complex etiology involving a particular region with pain and many other symptoms. It's a chronic progressive disease. But before I go further, let me tell you that it is known by multiple names. People call it by the name of algodystrophy, they call it algoneurodystrophy, they call it pseudox dystrophy, they call it pseudox osteoneurodystrophy, they call it causalgia, they call it post-traumatic pain syndrome, multiple names. But what we need to understand here is this, that complex regional pain syndrome is primarily of three types. Type 1, type 2 and type 3. Now first of all when we talk about type 1. If the reason behind the pain and the various symptoms along with the pain is something to do with anything other than nerve, we call it CRPS type 1. But if the reason behind the pain and various symptoms other than the pain, if the reason is somewhat related to the nerve, we call it CRPS type 2. So I'll repeat it again. If the reason behind this you know, pain syndrome has something to do with nerve, we're going to call it CRPS type 2. But if the reason behind that pain and various other symptoms has nothing to do with nerve, it has something to do with anything. You know, it can be bone, ligament, vessel, tissue, whatever it is, but it is other than nerve, then we are going to call it CRPS type 1. Type 3 is myofascial pain. That's not important. Now, when I talk about a condition called as pseudox osteodystrophy or pseudox osteoneurodystrophy, I'm sure you have heard of this term. This is one of the complications of Coley's fracture, which happens, you know, in a, in a rare case, like in a delayed presentation, it's a delayed complication. So is this a complication of Coley's fracture? Yes, fracture happens in a bone. Yes, I don't think bone is related to nerve at all. So pseudoxosinator dystrophy falls under the spectrum of complex regional pain syndrome, but that is not a part of CRPS type 2, because as I said, type 2 is something related to nerve, and 1 is everything related to, you know, other thing other than the nerve. So pseudoxosinator dystrophy is a classical example of CRPS type 1. At the same time, CRPS type 2, which I said is related to nerve, can also be known by the name of causalgia. Now, there is a typical classification of pseudox dystrophy or in simple words CRPS which says that it is of three types subacute acute and chronic the one which develops within less than three months is subacute the one between three to twelve months is acute the one which develops after twelve months is what is called as chronic type one I mean the one one which we talk about is subacute it has you know of course pain and other symptoms but basically you have to understand that a combination of four things has to happen abnormal sensory symptoms, abnormal motor symptoms, abnormal pseudomotor symptoms, abnormal vasomotor symptoms and of course trophic changes. In the subacute phase, you are not going to see anything on the x-ray, uh, just a triple phase bone scan can show you something. When we talk about acute, subacute is something less than 3 months, when we talk about acute it is 0 to 3 months, where x-ray will start showing you osteopenia, but when we talk about the chronic one, more than 12 months x-ray will start showing you severe uh, osteopenia. If I really want to understand this condition, pseudox dystrophy, I would like to make myself very clear that it's not a clinical diagnosis, it's not a radiological diagnosis, it's a clinical radiological diagnosis and there are four key words to explain this condition. Those four key words can be remembered with the help of a mnemonic and the mnemonic is what is called as SHOP, S-H-O-P, SHOP, S, swelling. The entire wrist, I'm talking about pseudox bursi type 1 CRPS, the entire wrist becomes swollen, stiff spasm even there are trophic changes in the skin it becomes thin shiny stretched with certain trophic changes in hair and nails so that's s for you edge hyperesthesia when i say hyperesthesia what does that mean that if even if somebody touches with a wisp of cotton it feels as if somebody's blowing a hammer 
happy little cheese, happy little cheese. The third one is O O. When I say O, what do you mean? Radiologically, osteopenia. Now, why osteopenia? Please try to understand that complex regional pain syndrome. As I said, it has a very complex etiology, but that complex etiology is basically nothing but an uninterrupted, uncontrolled, unregulated oversympathetic stimulation. When you see a line, what gets activated? Sympathetic, parasympathetic, sympathetic. What happens when you see a line? Your blood flow is increased. So don't you think that if in this condition where the distal end of the radius fracture, coolies fracture, we can see an excess sympathetic activity, yes or no? Yes. Because of that excess sympathetic activity over sympathetic stimulation, you know, a lot of blood is flowing from proximal to distal, distal to proximal. And this flowing blood is actually dissolving calcium from here and leaving behind deficiency of calcium, which excess what is called the osteopenia. So if you see osteopenia, there's a reason behind osteopenia. The reason is excessive blood flow due to over sympathetic stimulation. So as I said, the mnemonic is shock, where S, we have discussed swelling, stiffness, spasm, H, hyperesthesia, O, osteopenia, or an accident. The last one is P, pain, severe, burning, intense, totally out of proportion pain. You try everything, intramuscular, oral, intravenous, opioid, every analgesic, every opioid, everything has failed. Why? Because the pain is so much. Now, there are certain investigations which can be helpful, but to be very honest, I have come across one thing very clearly, that there is no predefined cause. There can be risk factors. Risk factors can be excessive mobility, risk factor can be anxiety, risk factor can be emotional disturbance, risk factor can be trauma, risk factor can be anything. Similarly, in investigations, it's a clinical radiological diagnosis. I think X ray showing osteopenia is a wonderful, you know, finding. And apart from that, you know, you can go for a bone scan in early stages. Apart from that, nerve conduction test and all that thing, they usually are not that helpful. Some people go for uh, you know a provocative kind of an investigation where they, I mean we can't call it a provocative, but it is a kind of a investigation where they apply some local anesthetic agent into the sympathetic ganglion, and if the pain gets better, that means you know the thing is you know pseudox. Now, as far as treatment is concerned, it is fairly divided into two parts: medical and surgical. And medical, you know, people try to start with sympathetics, alpha blockers, beta blockers. They sometimes help, sometimes don't. Antiarrhythmic drugs are also being used. To be very honest, slit ganglion block for upper extremity and lumbar block for lower extremity is usually wonderful. Apart from you know sympathetics and sympathetic ganglion block, the last treatment is a surgical treatment, which is surgical sympathectomy. Normally, it carries a very poor prognosis. Steroids are also helpful, but only in the early phase of the disease. If we go into the late phase of the disease, even steroids will not be helpful in that. There's one thing that I want to share with all of you. It's proven that vitamin C plays a very important role in prevention, prophylaxis of this condition. I'm not saying treatment. So guys, this was quite a piece about uh, complex regional pain syndrome, type 1, type 2. Primarily, we spoke about type 1, which is Sudex. I hope you get benefited with this video. Thank you so much. Stay tuned. Bye-bye.